Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 13 on the Short Explanations podcast. Now, we have another special guest with us. It's the same as before, but she's always special to us. My name is Hi. I'm Tom is there. And Yael is, where's Yael? Are you there? Phoenix. You're in, <laughs> well, you're in the on box. The bottom, in the box. Do you remember that game that were the, Matt, was it Hollywood Squares where you had to guess the box? That's what I feel like we're doing because we don't see where we are. Only Tom knows the secret. Of where we are in the like box. Brady Bunch. It could be like a Brady Bunch box and we could like point. Yeah. Well, that's what we do. Every episode we, we do it. So again, we're trying to come up with topics. We wanted to talk about privacy today. And the best person to talk about privacy is with Yael because she made this really awesome data broker opt-out list. But before we get there, I guess we should talk about what is what is privacy? Is that is that a good start? I don't know. I think so. Do we have privacy? It's Amendment 4. Yeah. I do know that. <laughs> it's Amendment um, 4. It, it, like, privacy is so weird nowadays. Like, it felt like, you know, talking about privacy and computer issues and anonymity 15 years ago on the internet, uh, or even less than that, was, you know, kind of a, I don't want to call it a given, because it wasn't really, but uh, it seems a whole lot harder to be anonymous on the internet today than it was back in the back in my day do we i mean i was gonna say i just pushed all my stuff out just out there i just don't care anymore it's not gonna work i i gave up i i think that's kind of how <laughs> most people are um it's you know i even when like thinking about this episode and kind of the questions i wanted to ask i i guess my my first question for you is is there any point in trying anymore? And I don't want to be like alarmist on that. Like I, I, I'm honestly curious, is there any winning this fight of trying to take back our privacy? It's information some people don't want others to know. Like you hear about that all the time where people were like, oh, this wasn't meant to be public or like um, I'm telling you about my health condition or whatever, but I don't necessarily want my boss to know or my enemies to know or like... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if we can be completely private, live on an island, like get rid of all of our devices. But I do think like people can keep some information from others. And it becomes really important when it's like maybe a domestic abuse situation where people are like, oh, I don't I want this person to not know where I'm staying at this moment for my personal safety or that kind of thing. Or like if you're planning an activist campaign and don't necessarily want people to know where you're going to be until you launch it or even in journalism like i'm writing a story but i don't want this to be public until it's public or a week before it's public whatever it is like so yeah i don't know it's a tough it's a tough question i get i so the, i guess the the one that that gets people on the privacy bandwagon is when they post on facebook where they're going on vacation and then someone robs their house i don't think that's an urban legend but i mean that doesn't happen to any of my friends but I can see that. And then when that happens, people start saying, wait a second, what's going on? I don't want anyone to know anything ever about me. And then they start caring until then. Or, oh, it's because I'm a high school teacher. It's the prom dress. It's the prom dress shopping. They don't want anyone to know their prom dress in case of whatever. It's just these little things that make people more private. But or until all of a sudden it becomes either too much or they just don't care anymore. Because I feel like we have these ebbs and flows, so mm. I don't know. So uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, at least for me personally, you know, I th there was a point in time when I took great lengths, you know, using VPNs for standard web based traffic, or you know, making sure that uh, the pictures I posted online to either photo sharing sites or social media sites, I made sure that you know you got to scrub all that metadata and keep it all squeaky clean, and you know, make sure that there's no identifying information in the background of a photo that someone could, you know, sharpen up and use. And I just today, honestly, I don't do most of that. Like I, I pay attention, but the trade-off for me is just not worth the time put into it. Post from locations that I'm at usually. I usually wait until I'm home or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I do little things, or like I'll pay attention at least, like who am I with? Like, do I want this mm -hmm. to be public at this moment? Like, 
Because it's not often that somebody sees it and comes to like check out what you're doing, but it does happen. So mm -hmm. actually, there's a co-working space I don't go to because they haven't always on camera. It streams to their website, and I'm like, that's creepy. <laughs> like, like I won't go there because I don't want people to know where I'm at in real time in a way that I can't like opt out of. You know, mm -hmm. I'd rather just not even be there, honestly. <laughs> like, I guess I, I, I have a <laughs> go ahead. I think my first real world uh, example of something like that was Foursquare way back in the day, uh, if, if you remember that. And for those of you uh, who didn't use Foursquare back in the day, it was a location based social network. So basically, you would go to uh, Jamba Juice, for instance, and you would check in on the Jamba Juice. And if you were there, you know, X number of times in the month, you became the mayor and like, you were better than your friends because you were the mayor of Jamba Juice. It was it was a stupid, silly little app, but people really liked it. Um, and once I went to a restaurant with some friends and then a totally different friend from a completely different, like friend group of my life just showed up and like, oh, hey, Tom, I saw you were here. So I just showed up and like, okay, a kind of cool. He's a cool dude. I liked hanging out with him. But on the other hand, like, that's a little creepy. And maybe, maybe I shouldn't want to be the mayor of John, but juice anymore. There's, there's a lot of pressure here on me uh, and I don't necessarily need that. That's so funny. I became the mayor of my gym because I was doing jujitsu and I was really annoyed that I wasn't getting promoted quickly enough I get, in my mind because I had switched gyms a lot and it makes it take a lot longer. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm here every day and I became the mayor of my gym. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody noticed. I don't think any of them were on Foursquare. But I don't know. I try not to like, like there's what people think creepy and what isn't, but like when is there actual harm? Like, and I think it depends mm -hmm. on your situation. Like, do you have a stalker? Like, is there um um, are there people who don't like you who are trying to find where you are, in which case it like suddenly becomes more important, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and to like get the elephant out in the open at the very least, right? The privacy concerns that I am dealing with, uh, with people knowing my physical location at the time, is very different than like what a woman would deal with, right? There, there are very, very different sets of expectations and fears and risks and you know just along man and woman boundaries uh so yeah. like my my need for privacy is probably less than my wife's need for instance yeah though there are situations where like men are targeted for whatever reason mm -hmm. like also have to yeah it's situational for sure though so my question, I guess, is I have kids and all my friends are posting all their photos of the kids. What I do is I use a little signal feature that lets you blur the faces. So I send the photo to myself and then send it and then post it because I have this idea that Google or whomever is going to AI generate like they're going to have they're going to have test cases of all my kids as they grow up and they're going to be able to create like older versions of whatever. Like I have this fear of that and I think it's unwarranted, but I don't know. I still do it. Yeah, there's also the, you know, the issue with especially young kids, they don't necessarily have the uh, capability to consent to just having their data and biometric information out on the Internet. Right. Like I can make that choice. I'm I'm a grown man. Um, but, you know, for my four year old niece, she doesn't. Yeah, I don't know much about like uh, age generation because i know you can do that pretty easily on an app with just one photo but like i do worry about photos ending up on sites that you don't want them on like creepy mm -hmm. sites, like, like bad like evil sites like whether that's like kids or like women who ha accidentally have their feet in a photo that like is public and weren't thinking twice about it like it can end up on these weird sites and it becomes hard to take them down though it's easier than it used to be but yeah, well it was it was just like po obviously posting them on Facebook or Instagram or whatever else. And, and I guess I used the, the metric. Well, if it's in a public place, like if we're, we were at the Mr. Beast, like physical location in the American dream mall and like, and they wanted that photo. Out. Can you take a picture of me so I can tell people I was here? Like, yeah, fine, whatever. Um, but it's one of those things that I, I look back and say, what am I taking all these photos and posting them? Maybe I should just step back or do something different. Like, I don't know. So I, so little things like that. And, and then you try and teach your kids the same thing and, and, and who knows. So it was, it was one of those things that I always have a fear about, but I guess we should move on to what is the data broker opt-out list? So 
broker off that list in like 2017 to help people get their addresses off of different data, like people search sites. Like um, at the time it was like Spokio and Pipple and sites like that. And um, it, it's an annoying process and the data brokers keep popping up and like they sometimes switch the process to be able to like remove it. So it's like already an annoying time consuming process. And the point of the guide was to help people kind of do it a little bit more easily. So we did a show many years ago about this. And we basically said, you, we can't control this. There are just so many. And like you said, they pop up and they and they make it hard and everything else. Taking it off one or this like the CBS Even News at 11, this website knows everything about you. Oh, hey, you can take it down. But there's hundreds more. And that, like you said, they pop up. And is it worth, I mean, is it worth it? Like, did you, have you gone through all of these and done this? Yeah done it and it's gotten easier over time i've also paid for services that do some of them for me um but i know that my address is still out there because i own a house so like you can if you know the county that i live in which is not hard to figure out people can figure out where i live and also it's on the voter i vote and so my address is on voter registry so like for me it's not completely like i'm like it's you can still find out where i live but i find that like a lot of trolls don't know about these tricks <laughs> like they don't know like oh like just look it up in the uh in this registry and so like i find that i've gotten a, a fewer people who are like oh i know you live at this address since i started doing it um but whether it's worth it i don't know i think it depends on like who you are and what you're worried about because a lot of people who tell me they use the opt-out site are activists or they are journalists and they're about to like publish something and they're trying to get as much removed as they can before that goes up and like it just makes them feel a little safer um it's not i don't there's also like issues like impersonation and identity theft and and or even just if you're using passwords or like identifiers that are your birth date or other information that could be found on there like that you, uh, some people like there's reasons to remove it for that but also like there's more information than you can find in a, like in a registry you can find out somebody's name and who they live and who else is on that um title but only if you're a homeowner so a lot of people rent and like some of the data brokers have they'll have like links to social media sites you might have forgotten about like the link to uh you know they'll have your age and and your former addresses and like phone numbers and um you know your relatives or who they think your relatives are so like i try to get that as hard to find as possible so i for me it is worth it but i think it depends on on the individual so when I don't remember in what capacity I did this, where you have to verify some sort of identifiable information where they pull it from something like which of these family members lives with you and they present you three options and you have to choose one or which of these addresses have you lived at? Is that the same? I, I, are they using one of these or is this their own? And I think it's the credit unions that do this. Like when I apply for a mortgage or something, um, if you pull all this data out, is that hurting you in any way? Like from the credit brokers or getting credit or whatever it is? Oh, I, I've i never had them not be able to identify me just because okay. I removed information. Like okay. they have some secret database somewhere that has all that. Um, but uh, um, I, I thought you were going to ask about like how hard it is to opt out because they make you like click on a link and, and share. Oh, we'll get there. Don't worry. We'll get yeah. there. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I know that's funny. No, I haven't. Well, I'm, I'm afraid by that. Like, I'm afraid. Like, if I do this, like, I'm afraid that somebody's going to want to do the family tree project, and I want to find. Like, I, I, I kind of want to find. Are there any? Like, I want to find the branches. And by opting out in 300 years, they may not be able to. Like, I, I don't know. I think. I think I'm just weird like that. Hmm. I, I, I kind of. <laughs> I kind of wonder about like with. Uh, and the, the credit companies you know with the breaches with our data getting leaked left right and center by everyone who has it either through uh incompetence or just the nature of capitalism buying and selling companies can can we really beat back the time like isn't the data out there and like i'm sure there's there's a several ways to try to opt out of these data broker collection schemes um, but 
it doesn't protect you against unscrupulous actors, but it, it could, you know, help protect you against unscrupulous actors in the future if they were to breach one of these data. So am I thinking about this correctly? Um, I mean, I think that it's an issue uh, that, like, if people have your data, it could be hacked or leaked. And that's true even if you opt out sometimes because they still maintain it. You're just, like, suppressing it online. But I take your point. Like, I wish there was, in fact, the FTC... It's like been almost a decade. It was like May 2014. The FTC was like, oh, there should be like a a single uh, like click. You should be able to opt out from a central source. You should be able to like just click on this one thing and like opt out of every data broker. And like there was never any legislation passed in response to this really cool report that had lots of recommendations. And so that's really frustrating. I think it might be one day, but like. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's tough. All of this is hard. It's annoying. Yeah. And I, I you know, for, for the record, and especially for the people listening, I'm not asking these questions to try to get you to, like, give up on, on your privacy or anything like that. I'm honestly just asking because these are questions I don't really have super clear answers. And not so that we shouldn't stop, or that we should stop trying. We absolutely should fight for our rights. We should fight for our privacy. Um, just trying to get a realistic angle on kind of a, the feel. I mean, I think that it's like a personal, like if you ask somebody, do you care that your address and whatever other information is on the site? And if you do care, you should opt out. And if you don't care, then like, then don't. <laughs> but, um, I, yeah, I, I don't just realize that it's like an annoying and time consuming or expensive or both process so that that but i don't know i do have hope that there will be legislation that'll make this easier at some point i don't know when but... so the scam comes we get this a lot so your water bill is due every quarter or whatever it is somebody some unscrupulous people will send you if uh letters if you hire us so we can't foreclose on your home because you failed to pay your water bill and they're getting this from the public water records of each town and so it's like so and then people get really scared like how do they know this information so you take all this information here and and people are saying oh i'm sure data brokers have it but then you present it to them and and then they get really crazy like how do i opt out i want to become super private living on an island and everything else and and you try to explain to them okay you can opt out but it's just going to happen again like while your water bill is public information and your and your mortgage record is public information and everything else, you're not going to achieve the privacy that you want. And the best thing is play this whack-a-mole game to try and suppress, like, you, I guess the right word is suppress as much as you can. Yeah, it sucks. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> This I'm, I'm, glad we have, <laughs> I'm glad we have something and I'm I'm glad that you've put together this list because you know it it's a an absolutely massive project. Um I, I don't think there's any you know binary winning or losing for this. Privacy and security has never been binary uh in any way. Um but I, I'm glad that we're doing something, anything. It's not perfect, but we shouldn't let perfect be the enemy. Mm. Yeah, there should be options for people, even though the options are time consuming and annoying or expensive and and not perfect. <laughs> so I'm glad people I always get excited when people tell me they use it and it helped them with something because it's like at least there's something you can do, I guess, even though like ideally we would just smash the entire system. Like but but yeah, we're not we're not well, doing so that, I guess. <laughs> we uh so I teach a cybersecurity course and we did talk about uh uh, OSINT and trying to get things. So I tell the students, your stuff is going out there. Like, I mean, all those emails you get from the college board, I mean, you're giving it to them and they know everything about you. And like at the SATs, you're filling this out. So I, br I, I brought this up and I said, let's go look at, let's here to pick one of these and search for your family and see what and you can find. And they come back and we said, wow, that's a lot. And I go, how do we opt out? And I go, there's, let's go through that list. But the problem is that that's a lot of work because, because like you said, they'll just change. Can they just change their name and just take the list and go somewhere else? I feel like they can just shut down and, and do DBA is in a different company. And then you got to do the whole process over again. And it's just a lot of work. 
Yeah, there's some, um, we do have like on the list, I have ones that are, I consider top priority and a lot of data brokers we think are taking information from those sites. And then there are also paid services, so it's not really clear which ones are best, but um, actually I am working, like Consumer Reports is working on a project with this organization called Tall Poppy. Um, they are really cool. They help, um, uh, they help with like digital safety for corporations, like companies will hire them to help them um, with employees that are being harassed or, or dealing with like fraud or social engineering and we're i can't talk a whole lot about it but we are hoping like at some point yeah. ideally this year to like be able to give better recommendations because when i started this list there was like one rep and delete me there was like two services but now there's like a dozen of services that'll opt out on your behalf though some of them are sketchy <laughs> like some of them actually advertise like i think this is so sketchy if you opt out of cluster maps, there's an ad for one rep that's like, oh, remove yourself from other sites using one rep. And like Nuber, if you opt out of Nuber, they'll recommend its partner brand yourself to opt you out of other sites. And I'm like, why are these companies that opt you out advertising on these like um, uh, data broker sites? That seems weird that they're giving money to the organizations that people are trying to like get their data free from. I don't, I don't know. I, I, it's kind of bizarre. So there's, it's, it's weird. There's a lot of weirdness. <laughs> Let me ask a completely unfounded conspiracy theory, kind of like literally no backing whatsoever to this question. Um, so forever, since the, as long as I've been using computers, there's been this thought about, you know, oh no, McAfee and Norton create all the viruses so they can sell you the antivirus product. And we all know that's that's just kind of bunk, right? Um, but are these data opt-out companies partnered or aligned or owned by the data brokers themselves? Like, have we seen any, have you seen any connections like that? Because um, it, it sounds like a great business. You create the problem and then you sell the solution. I mean, I know that they're partnered and that they advertise on one another i do think there's one data broker site that owns another uh another one but like for the most part um like i think that's bad because it's kind of endorsing the ecosystem that you're making money because people want to like break free from it but i don't i haven't seen anything where like they're they're like doing both I don't, okay that would be weird. Yeah. The other thing, too, that people ask me is, like, a lot of people are like, if I give the data broker opt-out sites, like, if you hire a site and they remove your information, like, are like are they going to use that information? Or even if you opt out of a site manually, like, or if they if you tell them where you live, are they going to, like, then know where you live and keep it in a secret file somewhere or something? And I don't know if that they do or not, but, like, just to be safe, I tell people, like, don't remove your information unless you know they already have it. Because there's no point. Like if it's not on the web, then like why would you try to remove it? I don't I don't know if they're actually doing that. Or, or I not. just thought of that. That is that that's scary. Like in the opt out form, they ask you for all this information to opt out and they don't have it. So now they're just you're just literally giving it to them. And yeah, sure, we'll delete it and they'll <laughs> like sell it to somebody else. They'll delete it, but they'll sell it to somebody else. I don't actually do i don't have any evidence that that's actually happening but it's like who knows it's like a very opaque industry but just to be safe i'm like don't don't share data i know that like if you file under um the uh ccpa like they're not supposed to use information that you opt out to like they're not like the companies are not supposed to be doing this but like i don't i don't it's hard because like like a lot of people who want to opt out don't live in california or vermont or these other states that have privacy laws and like Sometimes the, the, they'll delete it as a courtesy or like refuse to sell it as a courtesy, but like you don't really know. Like, I don't know. But that's the problem. Only California has that, and Illinois has some biometric thing. And then the rest of Europe has, has GDPR. And then I always found that funny. Too. There's like exemptions <laughs> if it's public information, like if it's available publicly online. Uh, I don't know the detail. Like we'd have to talk to like a policy expert. I always am fucking um, Justin Brooklyn, who I work with, is like an absolute whiz on like privacy and like policy. Um, but I like my recollection is that you don't 
that there's an exemption for information that's publicly available, which obviously if you own a house, it is publicly available. Um, so that, so it's not foolproof. Like, even though it's great that there's privacy laws, they're not, they're not how I would have written them. I would have, if I could wave a wand, like, and then I don't for everybody. <laughs> well, we want that. And then I want to post my awesome looking food at the awesome looking restaurant that I'm at. <laughs> And that goes all, and then you have to remember, I'm a public employee, so not only that, my salary and my job and everything else is is out there. Yeah, yeah. oh no, and I FOIA like anything anybody sends from a university is FOIAble. Like if people use the right search terms, like like I've gotten people's entire cache of emails about specific projects as a reporter. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know, but I post pictures of my food too, though I did take down. There was like Google reviews I had that are like very public and I'm like, oh, these five reviews are in my neighborhood. And like maybe I'll delete these. <laughs> so I I guess that brings me to my my next question. Yeah, you know, we've been talking a lot about data brokers, but these these aren't companies like Facebook or Google or Microsoft or Amazon, right? Like these are specific companies that their job is in this this is the question I'm asking uh, to just snarf up as much data as humanly possible all across the internet. Try to mash it all together into profiles that are you know hopefully correspond to an individual, and then what do they do with this? And they just sell like bucketed data to advertisers, or I what's what's kind of the end game for them in collecting all this stuff? And what are they using it for? Because they're not collecting it just for fun. There's different types of data brokers. So we've been talking mostly about people's search sites um, and they sell that information basically, or like either to individuals or to each other. But there's also like data brokers that focus on marketing um, and they like develop these dossiers on individuals that are used to like sell them things. Basically, they'll put you in categories based on like your age and all sorts of other information. Um, and then those companies will basically buy these lists of names and email address and like your interests or whatever they think your interests are um, and other information and like use that to market to you. Um, and then the least, sort of the least um, privacy invasive are like risk mitigation products and they'll like you verify your identity and like detect fraud. And those are like the least troublesome to consumers unless there's like incorrect information and that's annoying because it's really hard to correct it. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of the the summary of the different types. Got it. Got it. So um like, you know, for for the record, companies like Facebook and Google and Amazon, they don't sell your data, right? They they've worked very hard to to curate and and take all that data on you. They use that for their own advertising. Um, right? So Google Google owns DoubleClick, they own AdSense, they that is literally Google's point as a company is to sell advertisements. Um, so figure out actually something I haven't figured out that I'd be interested in trying to figure out is like so because they, they you can place ads that people meet in certain demographics, right? And mm -hmm. so like you could be like I want to advertise this to like women between the ages of eighteen and twenty nine in in Portland or whatever. If somebody clicks on that link, do the companies then identify or and like buy something? Like, do the companies then identify their age and look like, like how much of that can you extrapolate from the people who actually buy something and like create? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they already have that information or if they need that information or if they're using it anywhere. But it seems like it's pr it would be pretty easy to do. I just don't know, like because the industry is so opaque. Like I just don't know exactly how that's happening. And when I brought it up to people, they're like, it doesn't exactly work like that. But they won't tell me like why. Or how it does actually work. So I don't hmm. know. my problem is is that Google pays me whatever, like ten cents, twenty cents, if I use Google Maps to go to a convenience store, buy something, and and I get twenty cents if I just tell them which credit card, but I get a dollar if I upload my receipt. Mm. And to and and I'm just giving that away because because that's cash. And... I mean, I I don't see that as, like, super evil. It's your data, you are giving it away, and they're paying you for it. That doesn't sound terrible to me. 
I wish I had 20 cents for every single company that has taken my data and done something with it. I would be, I'd be way better off <laughs> than I am right now. Yeah, there was a Pew survey. It's pretty old, but I remember like being really interested in it when it came out and it was talking about how people are willing to give up privacy for coupons basically, or like deals. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm pretty bad because I use like, um, like I like VR. I have like an Oculus. I play Pikmin Bloom. And so like, you know, Google and Facebook know exactly where I'm at because I'm like, oh, games are fun. Like, you know, which I'm sure a lot of people who are into like their threat model is about like privacy from corporations would be absolutely horrified by. But like, I've always been more worried about like, is somebody going to come to my house and try to kill me? Like, you know, my threat model is more focused on security than like privacy. Though obviously there's like if that data ever gets leaked, like it, like there's so much crossover between privacy and security. Um. But yeah, I don't know. It's 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 complicated. I don't, I really like what Eva Eva at EFF Eva Galperin like gave a talk about like she talked about privacy veganism and privacy nihilism, and I and I'm like oh yeah I'm somewhere between the two where like nihilism is like I don't care about privacy everybody has anything anyway, and like privacy veganism which is like I'm gonna live on an island, like I don't have Facebook I don't I don't know and I feel like a lot of People will make choices for themselves, but their choices don't always seem consistent to me, like myself included. Um, um, like they'll be like, "I'm not on Facebook, but I'm on Instagram." <laughs> like, it's like I don't know. So I don't, I don't know exactly what I feel like. That it kind of hammers home that it's like so hard to make these decisions and understand the trade offs, and it's so like ubiquitous and easy to just be like, "Oh, Google can know wherever I'm walking at any given point because I want like a sneaker decor Pikmin or whatever. <laughs> like Facebook can have all my data because I want to like play golf. I want to play mini golf with my friends in other countries or whatever. I don't know. It's it's annoying. I mean, I like the Google location features. Like I really do, but then I I, I get weirded out by that and. And I have to explain to people that same idea. It's like you're afraid of Facebook, but yet you're going to use WhatsApp and Instagram and everything else or whatever other thing. It's I'm going to use DuckDuckGo, but I'm going to use the Google hash bank, the, ha the Google exclamation point so it can search Google for me. It's like, okay, you do you. <laughs> what are we fighting for here? Either be okay with it or or live that whole life and start throwing things out. like. Yeah, I don't. I also get annoyed like every single time a company is like, "Oh, look at us! We have a new like privacy, and like whatever. We have some new feature that tells you what is private and what isn't, but it doesn't include everything." And like, I don't know. It's like you. F it makes you feel like you're doing something to like be aware of choices and decisions you make, and then all this stuff is happening on the back end that you don't even have any awareness of, let alone like control over. So yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I feel like that's like my tagline for this episode is like it's bad. Everything is bad. <laughs> so but that's why if... no one listens to our podcast because all we do is bring them down with <laughs> negative security stories. Which which leads me to my next question. Um for a regular person out there on the internet living their life day to day, if they wanted to take back a little bit of control should they run through this data opt-out list what what do you suggest that they do are there things that they should be looking at shouldn't be looking at maybe they just make a threat model and figure out what they actually care about uh what would you have them do this is kind of time consuming i always joke that i want to have parties with the dj and like food and because it's like it's going to take you all day so like I see that for people who are like really interested in making sure their address is offline for a specific reason or they're too broke to pay for one of the services like they just don't have the money. Um, so I don't think that's for like everybody. Um, I don't know. You can pay for a site like I've been using Canary lately, which I really like because it'll ask you. It'll be like, is this you? Do you want to opt out? And you can be like, yes, I don't want this information on this site. Or you can be like no, I'm okay with my web, my email address being on my website or whatever. Um, so I don't know. I kind of like it. There's different ones. Like people have different um, experiences with different services, but Canary is kind of cool because um, I think it has like a monthly fee that's pretty affordable and you can opt out um, for just a month. But I don't know. It might be fun to just search yourself and decide what you want to do. But like, I will caution that like people who are like, oh, I don't have a need for privacy. I'm just a regular person. Like that can change really quickly. Um, 
and or you might like end up being close to somebody who like i don't know i i was listening to an OSINT talk and the guy was like well this person protected their identity but their family and friends didn't like and so you can like kind of out your friends and family who are trying to protect their identity by not kind of paying close attention to though this was mostly like oh they have a picture of them with their location tagged on somewhere or whatever like they use their real name during a live stream like a discord stream they like use the name of somebody associated with their handle that wasn't before um so yeah i don't know i think it depends it depends on your situation but i don't have like a cut and dried like everybody should do this like i don't want to tell everybody you need to spend the next eight hours like removing your address from every site. But if people are worried about it and they don't have a lot of time or money, they can just opt out of the ones that we have the skull and crossbones. Like those are the big ones. Um, so yeah. I don't know if that answers your questions because it's kind of yeah. like a, it depends. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's that's kind of what I figured. Very rarely on this show will we encounter, uh, and I mean, very rarely in life, in, in the security world, will we encounter just a, yes, do this. It's a cut and dry answer. Like, hey, should you use a password manager? Probably. Should you make sure when you, when you type in your password at HTTPS? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, beyond the really simple situations, those cut and dry answers are not existent. Uh, so I appreciate it. There was a data broker opt out site that wasn't using HTTPS. I'm thinking, I think it was IDX privacy. I was really surprised. I was like, cool. So people are signing up for you. <laughs> and like, you're not using this basic feature. I don't know if they never use it or if it was just like, um, a lot of them will have you like click a link to confirm your address and I have like um you know HTTPS mode on my browser so I'm like oh great this isn't working some somebody somewhere needs to like fix something <laughs> that's always with, fun with that said I'm going to say that we are out of time so <laughs> we will leave you with any other we're going to tell people to join our signal group which you are in so we thank you for that uh you can join. We don't know who's in there, but you find us. We'll put you in. We're pretty good at it. And and I have nothing else. We'll put all the links that you gave us to put in, and you get the last word. Oh, I what just put you on the spot. I don't know. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. In addition to the data broker opt out guide, if people want to do something else for security, um, Consumer Reports has this really cool uh, website called Security Planner, which you can check out on securityplanner.org. And you can just, um, it, it gives you a little quiz question where it asks you, like, what are you concerned about? What devices do you use? What are you trying to do? And it'll give you, like, a customized and free digital security plan. And you can just follow the steps on there. Um, and those are usually, like, a better thing to do as your first start before you start, like, spending hours opting out, depending on your what you're worried about. So, yeah. Okay. With that said, I would like to thank you, Al, and 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 we'll see everyone hopefully next week so bye everybody see y'all